Hey everyone, we are back. I know we were going to do this on YouTube a very long time ago. And, you know, shit happens. Not that I'm blaming anyone, but... Mm, we're going to try this uh, one more time. I made a new seed. A new, a whole new team. I have no idea what's on it. And we're going to play Final Fantasy VI Randomizer and see what happens. So far it looks like uh, Terra is using the Seelies or Maria Palettes, one of the two. I can only imagine what ridiculous shit they gave her. For those of you who don't remember or don't know, a Final Fantasy VI Randomizer randomizes every aspect of the game from item drops to what characters look like, what their default names are, what they can equip, what spells they learn, if any, what skill set they have, what what espers teach. It just, it's everything. And so we are going to make our way downtown, moving fast. Do, 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 do. Oh, I need to set it for optimized, don't I? Or memory, whatever. We're on our way to the Welk. This is going to be just a stomp all the way to the boss. Super duper easy stuff. This is, this is one of my favorite ways to play games that I'm already familiar with. A randomizer really shakes up, uh, really shakes up the experience, and I like that. I mean, I know this game like the back of my hand, so being able to play it in a new way, being forced to use different characters to come up with different strategies. Sometimes I get really broken items. Sometimes. I'm a garbage person with garbage abilities for the whole game. Oh, there's memory. Okay. Dirk Buckler. Ooh, Ninja Gear. That's really good. And she has Sword Attack. I am okay with that. See if she has any magic. No, probably wouldn't. But you never know. But we can't really use any of that wonderful, wonderful magic until we ditch the magic tech. Did I say that right? I know what I meant, but I don't think what I meant happened with words. But that is okay. Boop. It also randomizes the drops that enemies give, which is great until you get potions, until you get no potions until the world of ruin. Like my last run where we had no Phoenix Downs until almost halfway through the game. We had awesome offensive equipment. But we could not survive anything. You know what? We're gonna. I should have just switched to Terra and used Bioblast. We'll still cut it short by not by enough. This isn't a speed run, but I still I still like expedience, if at all possible. Boop. Alright, we're going to drop some heal force in the next fight, though. Because I don't want to go into the fight with the first boss, no matter how, air quotes, easy it is. You know, I don't want to be unprepared. Okay. Alright, now I have to stop using Bioforce, but that's okay, because I need to use Heal Force. I want to make sure everyone is as close to topped off as possible. 
probably won't be more than 100 hit points, though. Like, Vix is almost dead. I really appreciate that they gave uh, Vix and Wedge, like, sort of... Sort of Final Fantasy... Not Final Fantasy. Star Wars names. Like, Biggs and Wedge instead of Vix and Wedge. I wonder if that was a translation error. Hmm. Interesting, if true. First part of this game is kind of boring, though. You know what you're doing, you know what to expect. You go to the save point. No, I don't want more info about save points, but I do want to save. Oh, so they have 105 hit points. But this is the first boss of the game. It's big, uh, big shtick, if you will, is it absorbs energy whenever it treats into its shell. It, they say in the game that it absorbs lightning, but it absorbs everything. At least so far that I've seen. So we're just gonna have to play it safe. And it will be okay. The only downside to sword tech is, man, it charges slow. I don't remember if they fixed anything in this randomizer to, to alleviate that. But, man, it charges slow as fuck. We won't head over the Esper. Get them! This make, just makes me want to play Dissidia more. Because I don't know if you guys have played Dissidia yet. That's still relevant. Hopefully that's still relevant by the time this comes out. Uh, Kefka is kind of weird. Like his first uh, HP attack is uh, hyper, uh, hyper Drive, I believe. And it's like a forward charge where he shoots his wings out and the feathers deal damage. But it, you have to be really close for it. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a bad time. Oh, fuck. Who's about to attack? Oh, we're about to take damage. I mean, we're supposed to. I always thought he countered attack on everything. I'll take it. Alright, this last wave of attacks ought to do it. If not, another round tops. There we go. Right on time. And we got a smoke bomb for our efforts. That lets us retreat from combat. Very handy. Fun fact, that in the original uh, gameplay teaches all three level three magic spells and you have to fight it. In this version of the game, it'll probably give cure, reflect, slow, and poison. And our normally green-haired half Esper, now master swordsman, is communing with the Esper. Bye, Wedge. Bye, Vix! Bye! Bye! However, she still has amnesia. And will have it for most of the first half of this game. And 
and we're about to meet our second character. I think I'm just gonna leave all their like default, whatever weird default name they have. I think I'll just leave them. Yeah, it's kind of like a Sealy's uh, palette. Sealy's Maria, pretty much the same thing. Now, normally, when you go up to a clock, you get an elixir. Elixirs are amazing. Let's see what kind of wonky nonsense we get. A mysterious young woman controlled by the Empire and born with a gift of swords. Maria. Hmm. Who'd have thunk it? Uh-oh, it's the fuzz. 5-0! 5-0! No, you cannot have her. She is a main character. So now we're gonna we're gonna run up to the the clock, get our item, and then we're gonna sneak out the back. Like we are a child who is grounded. Ooh, Black Belt. Hell yeah. Black Belt uh, deals counterattacks when you're hit. When you're by yourself, there's a lot of being hit. All right, bye, fella. That's Arvis, I believe. Who'd have thought they would see me walk across a giant wooden bridge over town? Convenient, that. So now we go through the cold mines of Narch. Or Narsh in the in original English translation. Dispatch! She does way more damage than old Terra. She takes a lot less damage, too. Oh, her melee sucks. Holy shit. But she's building a Dirk, so... The most garbage of physical weapons. Okay. Let's see what our next couple of treasure chests are. Then we will meet Locke. And then we will save Terra. Rip having magic. I could just blow through these if I had magic. But having black belt sure does help in the early game. Normally your first black belt doesn't show up until you're on uh, Cyan's uh, little side mission. Where you beat up some uh, Imperial soldiers attacking the city of Doma. And you all, I think you always get one for beating their leader. But now we have one already. And that's about a couple hours into the game. But now we have one in the early going. And it is going to make a lot of your, like, Terra based problems just evaporate. Holy damn. Air Lancet is a weapon you can, a dagger you can steal from. The first time I believe you could steal it is Tunnel Armor. It has a chance to do an AoE wind attack. And see, like, our damage just skyrocketed. And I believe that counts for your counterattacks, too. I know it counts for every melee hit you make. Like, if you're equipped with Genji Glove and Offrig or using the, the Quick Spell... I believe it also counts for counterattacks. I'm hoping it'll proc, but I guess it won't. That's okay, we just stomped him in the nuts. Colton, if you could just loop a little stomp him in the nuts right here, that'd be great. Oh no! And 
and she passes out because she just fell like a hundred feet, probably. This is also where we find out if luck is going to be worth a good goddamn. But first, a flashback. This is where we learn Kefka is an irredeemable piece of human excrement. I mean, we get a lot of examples of that throughout Final Fantasy VI. But in particular, when he puts the slave crown on Terra and has her murder, what is it, 50 armored Imperial soldiers? Pew! And doesn't even feel bad about it. See, he's pretty, pretty content to see the regular, like, rank-and-file be killed. They're kind of like Nazis, only they want to take over the world with magic, not awful things. Though they don't really want to genocide people, so I guess they're less like Nazi Germany and more like World War One Germany. They're assholes, I mean, that's really all I got. Okay, that is a cool color palette. He's very sensitive about his, about his career choices. Boy, this game's gonna get confusing and awkward. All right. Yes, I sent for you, asshole. I need you to go save a girl from the mines. <laughs> it's funny you mention her. All right, fine. But you owe me. I guess I'll go help. Then we'll head to Figaro. But first, hoo I believe this is also the first time you can unequip Mog. Maybe the only time. Because sometimes he come in the original game he comes with a, a polearm that's incredibly powerful and gives uh, Edgar a very serious damage spike. But the crux of that being now you can't really use Mog for much because he takes hits like a school child. But if you don't use him, you don't get his first dance. But in this game, who knows what he's going to have. I do like this. Uh, why are the Moogles wearing thongs? This is weird. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. All right, he has the standard early game crap. Tools, but I don't think I start with any tools. So we're not using him. This is Okay, Irvine, there's our Moogle. He's got lore, he's got magic. Let's see what lores he gets. Hot damn. Step mine, clean sweep, aqua rake. Oh, what magic does he have? The only downside is I can't use him again for a very long time. But sweet baby Judas. He's gonna come out swinging. And you know when he's gonna come out swinging? Next time, right here on bottom tier. <laughs> 